Well, Ross, thanks for joining us. It's a tale of two penalty decisions in later on in the game. One given, one wasn't. Yeah, um, I haven't watched the Grimsby penalty back, so I, I would be very uh, unclear in terms of saying it was or wasn't a penalty. Um, I can only go on the reaction of my players and what I've been told, and, and Craig was convinced that he touched the ball and won the ball. Uh, on the inside, outside the box, wherever it was, I think it was obviously inside the box. Um, so I can only go on that, and uh, it looked as though he did. It looked for me at the time that he got back in, but um, <laughs> wow, second ones. I, I think I've only been close to speechless a couple of times, Dave. Um, but what it won't be, what, what what I won't do is I won't make an excuse for the fact that we got beat totally with the penalty. I think we deserve to get back in the game. I think in our second half performance, we deserve to get a point from the game. But um, we've let in, for me in the first half, take the penalty away a little bit because we're chasing, we're chasing the win, but we've let in two goals that we've addressed, talked about, um, try to become better with. We're conceding too many, too many goals, which isn't giving us an opportunity. And it, well, then we have to put in an absolute unbelievable second half performance to get anything from a game. But um, to answer your question, well, <laughs> well, it's beyond beyond anything. That, and and, the, and ultimately, let's get it right. It's going to go away. They're going to talk about it. We'll get no recognition. No one will say anything. And the same things carry on happening. I saw you speaking to the referee after the game. What did he say? That the strikers, defenders' arms were in a natural position. They were. Um, Ian away. Uh, honestly, what a man. Um, spoke to him a few times over the uh, COVID lockdown that we both went through, and he's been an incredible support to to me. And, uh, and I'd like to think he would say the same in terms of um, you know the, the, the sort of relationship that we built up a little bit through having sort of similar circumstances. But as we walk off the pitch, there he says, "You ruin the young man. You ruin the young man because it's a blatant penalty." How you and listen? It's easy to say it when when it's your team that have just won a game of football, but. When you've got that and the Grimsby players are walking off the pitch laughing and, 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 and almost pretty much apologising, I think um, I think that tells you the truth, the story, but at the same time, like I say, don't expect anything to be done. It'll all just disappear into the distance and in a couple of weeks' time we'll be talking about another performance like that again. And once again, it was the ideal start. It was a fantastic run from Orsatouri and a very cool finish from Conor Wilkins. Yeah, and, and we've, you know, we've missed that with Ruel, you know, and, 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 we, and I want to say Ruel, we've missed it with the boys that we've had lined up to play in that position there in goal. Louis Dennis obviously we've suffered a little, a little bit of a, of a loss in that area and we know that Louis Ruel's energy, I think at barring like about a 10 minute period in the beginning of the second half, I thought Ruel was really good for us today. Um, like I say, kept, kept things alive, energetic, carried the ball up the pitch, constant, you know, constant threat probably without getting as many shots off at goal that, that he would have liked. Um, so yeah, give ourselves a platform like we did on Tuesday night. but. The first goal disappoints me because we cover it so much and we talk about what's going to happen from set pieces. We're, we're, we're playing in League Two. Teams, some teams come away from home and they're you know, set up to try and get a couple of set pieces and see if they can get something from it. And exactly what we said happened was could happen, happened, and, and we've let ourselves down by by losing our men in the box. Um, and then the second one, scrappy in the way that we turn the ball over and we're not set up properly behind to, to defend. The four changes of that due to sort of rotating the squad. I think I said to you the other night a little bit. I think um, I think on a number of number of levels and performances there was people that warranted being back in the team again. Probably not from the back of Tuesday, but but on the whole, um, Tools come on Tuesday night. I think Josh Coulson's been uh, good for us and solid for us in, in, in recent weeks. But but Tools probably deserved his opportunity, and Coulson probably needed a rest. Um, but yeah, you know, part of it is rotation, but, but part of it is um, you know, set down to certain performances as well. Kondi Ekanoli started at right back. Yeah, um, <laughs> they changed the team a little bit in terms of the team that they played against Cheltenham the other night, but I felt that that real outrageous pace that they've got in their team when, uh, when Edwards came on there. Uh, that we thought that was going to be the team to start, and we felt that, that Tunji would be the man to uh, to cope with that. I thought he was outstanding when he went and played second half, uh, centre half. Uh, really comfortable on the ball, helped to start attack. So uh, I've been pleased with him since he's been here, Dave. We shouldn't be talking about penalty decisions. We should have been talking about that goal from Jordan Maguire. Drew. It was a special one, wasn't it? Yeah, we had. Yeah, it was a very good goal. To acknowledge that, me and Jordan had a really good conversation yesterday because. Um, 
for a number of reasons. He hasn't played probably the minutes, well, no, the minutes that he, he, he would like and, and feels that he deserves. And um, we had a really good, honest conversation yesterday. And I said to him, look, you, you know, you're going to get your chance. I still trust you to do it. And when the goal went in, I said to him, that's one nil to you. You've come on the pitch and, you know, and, and, and shoved it down my throat a little bit, the fact that you haven't started. So uh, I'm delighted for him. You know, it's, um, he sat there patiently, waited his time. And we know he's got star quality in and around the box. I thought he was very good when he came on. And they know the goal games are coming thick and fast. It's Tremi now. Yep, yeah, another um, another long distance to travel. Um, have to dust yourself down. Have to you know have to have to prepare yourselves properly and, and look after yourselves in order to be uh, to be ready for the journey and re- ready for the challenge that's um, that's coming. Very frustrating for us all. I'm sure there's people sitting at home, you know, very angry with the fact that we've. Um, We've lost again today, obviously very hang- angry myself. I think the fact that we've come out again in the second half, it, it's got to stop being a, or, or nearly there, nearly nearly got a result, nearly nicked a point because you can't keep pulling rabbits out of the hat, you can't keep giving yourself a mountain to climb and then keep climbing them. Um, we've nearly we've nearly done it today, but um, we still would have been disappointed with the fact that we've conceded in the goals that we are. With all these games, how difficult is it to you have time with these players on the training yeah, it's, it's difficult, Dave. I think um, yesterday was the first time in a very long while that we had everyone training together. So people might think that's a bit strange, but you know, on a Monday, boys are still stiff and sore from from playing on a Saturday. They're, they're running big distances and working extremely hard out there. Um, so Monday is a write-off. Then when we come in again on a Wednesday, Wednesday's tough because the boys have played the night before. So it makes it very difficult and we've not got everybody fresh and, and ready to train properly until Friday. So Friday's pretty much our only um, full day of having a whole group together to, to, to work with. Uh, I was pleased with the work that we put in yesterday, um, but obviously it wasn't at the level required because uh, because of the goals that we conceded after doing a day's work. In the injuries today? Um, no, Dan, Dan was suffering a bit of cramp um, towards the end there. Um, but otherwise, nothing that's been outrageously reported to me. And finally, for me, the updates on the absentees. Start, start, Lou Dennis. Yeah, Lou was very close today, very close. Um, but we felt that, or you know, physio, physiotherapy-wise, we felt that he was still suffering with some soreness. And, and um, were we in a position where we really felt we needed to risk him? I think getting Ruel back was, uh, was always going to help. Lou have that little bit of time he needs to uh, to be ready for, for hopefully for Tuesday. Uh, Leanne Gall had a really good chat with him yesterday and he said he feels as though the hamstring is really improving. Um, he's not suffering a great deal of pain. Now it's about being able to push the injury further to uh, to build up how robust it's going to be for, for when he returns and we see him back out on the pitch. Thanks, Thanks.